glory to God for making it possible for us to witness another uh, Easter celebration. Um, this celebration is the most important celebration in Christianity uh, because if Jesus Christ uh, did not come uh, according to the scripture to come around to come and die for us you know uh, Christianity will have been empty it will have been a religion without power have been a religion uh, without success uh, so we thank God for making it uh, possible and that is why this celebration is the most important of all Christian celebrations and so we thank God for the privilege we thank God for the grace that the Lord has given to you and I to to witness uh, this time so we thank God so we are going to uh, be speaking on what relates to this season uh, but before we do that let's pray uh, let's pray in our special study today let's pray father we thank you for this privilege you have given to us to uh, to see today and to see this particular season this particular week uh, that is called the Holy Week we thank you glory be to your name Lord as we deliberate uh, about the issues that relate to what you have done for us particularly um, in this week in history uh, we bless you uh, we pray that you will teach us. You will give us um, understanding. Uh, what we are going to look at, uh, though, is, is full of history. Um, you will help, allow us, you will help us to dig out the significance of these historical events uh, to our lives uh, this evening. In the name of Jesus, uh, bless us, Lord. And uh, uh, in this celebration, use it to God to renew our lives. Everything that needs to be renewed, everything that needs to be refreshed, that, re that needs to receive a uh, new life, uh, let it happen to us. Uh, this celebration time in Jesus' name. Amen. So you are highly welcome. Just like we have said, we are uh, going to be doing a special uh, study today um, in relation to this season. And so please quickly, let's uh, get ready for that. <coughs> As the Lord will teach us this evening. Um, in the name of Jesus Christ um, just like uh, you and I um, should know or for those who do not know um, we the Easter celebration uh, started on Sunday if we look at our calendar uh, for this year um, Palm Sunday began uh, on Sunday and that was March 28th um, in our own modern uh, day night uh, circles which is midnight to midnight uh, uh, you know uh, more, uh, night circles day night circles uh, so we and that is what we are going to be following in our study um, today so March 28 uh, they began the uh, Holy Week and uh, that is the week that uh, is referred to as the Passion Week um, of our Lord Jesus Christ that means the week 
that explain everything that Jesus Christ did um, till the time that he was crucified and uh, he resurrected that means uh, so uh, this week is uh, in the calendar for this year it falls into this particular week that we have and that is why it is called the Holy Week uh, according to the church so we are going to say some few things uh, in relation to that to those events rather that happened then we will pray this evening um, so why are we doing it why are we going to be talking about the events of the Holy Week um, you know the events of the Passion Week of our Lord Jesus Christ um, uh, it is so important uh, let's go and read the book of Hebrew and find out the reason why casting our minds back to the events that have, has, has, have happened in history you know the importance of that to you and I um, today uh, let's read Hebrews chapter 2 uh, from verses 1 to 4 the Bible says we must pay more careful attention therefore to what we have had so that we do not drift away now see you and I this is not the first time that we will be hearing it that um, our Lord Jesus Christ came according to the scriptures to die for the whole world so that we can we can serve the Lord and we can receive eternal life he came so that he can redeem us to God now so he is saying to us that we need to pay more careful attention to all these things that we have had you know so that we will not drift away look at the Bible it say if the message spoken by angels were abiding <coughs> and every violation and disobedience received his just punishment how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation the salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who had him and also testified to it by signs wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit which distributed uh, distributed according to his will now you see that this message the issue of death and resurrection of Jesus is one of those uh, things that we must pay careful attention to so that we will not drift away so if the Bible is saying that we should pay attention to something so that we will not drift away that means we have tendency as human beings to drift away to forget the precious work that Jesus Christ has come to do for humanity it is very very possible and to be sincere if we observe what is happening around us today you discover that several of us have actually drifted away from this understanding from this fact that Jesus Christ came to die that he came actually he actually came to die for us and he resurrected to give us new life so this is one of the issue the truth of the word of God that we must not drift away from and that we must keep paying careful attention to every time and that I think that's one of the reasons why the church you know the church fathers our fathers decided that this celebration must come on 
we must do it we must do it every year we must celebrate the this uh, uh said the, the, the resurrection of our lord jesus christ we must cast our minds back every year to history and and i think it's a very good thing for it to be in in the world calendar in the calendar that every year easter period must be remembered must be celebrated so that we can always pay careful attention to what has happened you know so that we will not drift away we will not forget and that we we will always maintain that consciousness that our lord jesus christ is the savior of the world now he said even all these things were confirmed this thing this message have been confirmed he said this salvation which was once announced by the lord was confirmed by you know to us by those who had him people that have had him people that were with jesus the disciples you know they confirmed it that it is true we we read it in the word of god you know they confirm it to us that look oh, this jesus christ actually died that is the reason why they wrote it down for us and that's what we are actually reading today and not only that god also testify it by signs and wonders and various miracles you know he testify the fact that uh, jesus christ died and resurrected through you know a lot of signs signs you know wonders miracles and all those miracles that happen at that and still happen today to testify that uh, jesus christ is real and to testify to the fact that he came around and to die in the you know to resurrect uh, you know for us and so uh the reason why this study we are doing today is so much important is so that we can pay more careful attention to events you know and history is one of those things that actually sustains the church that sustains that you know that sustains christianity if if all these histories are, are not in existence uh, probably you know uh, those who are against christianity will have been able to push christianity the way you know even for a long time but because of this history all these uh, recorded facts that is confirmed even both in the secular history you know because of all this history that have been documented for us in the word of god you know so that's why we still have we can we, we can still speak that what we are talking about happened it is not just uh, a, a, it is not a, what some people just decided to put together no it happened it was not it is not a fiction and uh, the bible is not a fiction it's a fact it's not what some people just uh, looked up and began to write no it happened everything documented here you no know, is uh, is fact so that's the reason why people of god we need to go back to remind ourselves pay most careful attention to uh what is what has happened especially at this point in time probably somebody has not you know had it in this uh, direction before or in this manner before you know you need to pay most careful attention to uh what the lord did for us particularly in this very last week of his life very very significant and that is why we just want to quickly run through the timeline we will just run through the timeline of the events or, 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 or that happened that occurred um, during the very last week of our lord jesus christ then we we'll pick one or two things for us to learn in our bible studies today then we will go ahead and pray all right so i'm not going to be reading all the bible passages i will just mention them uh, if you are close to your pen there you can quickly write them down then you can read them uh, as i 
just go through the timeline as it happened uh, in the Word of God and um, as it will have happened if the event falls to our own uh, calendar today. That means if it falls to this particular week as it will have happened as it is seen in the Word of God the way it happened at that time. You know, we are doing we are doing a remembrance and uh, we have to want to see, want to follow how it happened at that time exactly. As if it's happening, you know, this very week. You know, exactly. And so I want you to quickly follow this timeline. You can see that it is very, very significant and it is very, very uh, rich for you and I to really, really know. All right, so you can write them down in case you want to follow it uh, personally in your own uh, Bible or, you know, in, in your whole, for your own personal study. So I'm going to be looking at that quickly, the timeline of the Holy Week. Now, remember that the Holy Week started on Sunday, which was March 28th in our own calendar. So, from that time, so we have started, the, the celebration has started. And uh, I believe you observed your uh, Palm Sunday on that very Sunday. So, uh, on Sunday, which it should be Sunday, of course, Sunday, we, which will be March 28th in our own time, then... Which uh, that is when the uh, the celebration, the Holy Week begins, and it is done through uh, uh, the celebra uh, the resurrection time, which is going to be next Sunday by the special grace of God. Now, the first thing that we notice is the triumphant entrance of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And how he spent the night in Bethany. And that's what happened. That is the first day, which is uh, the Palm Sunday. That you and I, we have talked about that Sunday. Uh, the Palm Sunday. That's how the event that happened on that first day of the, of the week. Um, you know, of the last week of our Lord Jesus Christ, he entered into Jerusalem in a grand style like a king. And everybody welcomed him. Women were, you know, the boots clothed on the ground and, uh, and he, as he rode on it and so on and so forth. And people were waving a palm lips to him uh, as if they were welcoming a king and say, Oh, Sana, Oh, Sana. And then. Uh, which means save now or save us and with the mentality of the fact that he was coming as a political savior as a political king or a leader to deliver them from the roman um, tyranny or the roman government and as at that time and so that was uh, what happened so you can find the accounts in matthew 21 and verse 1 mark 11 and verse 1, Luke 19.29, John 12 and verse 12. Now, on Monday of that time, which we actually falls to Monday, uh, this is the second day, which is March 29, uh, after that Jesus Christ leaves Bethany, and the events that happen on Monday, all of them can be found in Matthew 21 verse 12 mark 11 22 uh, Luke 19 and 45 you can read all of that now these are the events that happen uh, the second day of the passion week of our Lord Jesus Christ he leaves Bethany then he causes the victory on the way into the city he weeps over Jerusalem he cleanses the temple for the second time in history in his ministry and um, uh, late in that day uh, looks into the temple and um, then leaves the city and um, then he spent the night in Bethany 
Then on Tuesday, this is what happened, or like which is today, and this is the event that will have happened if it were to be now, you know. But as it happened at that time, and and it falls exactly on this day in our own calendar, which is March 30. We can see Jesus Christ leaving Bethany, that then um, finds the fig tree that he caused, which was yesterday, which is yesterday, you know, uh, will have been yesterday if it were to be in our calendar. Uh, so he finds that fig tree with that, then he used it to teach on faith, then he uh, possesses the temple and his precincts confound and pronounces war upon uh, his enemies. Then he leaves the city. Then we can see Olive uh, discourse on the way back to Bethany. Then we see in, on, that it happened today. Also Judas bargains with uh, the Sanhedrin to betray him. Then he's, he went back again to spend night in Bethany. Then you can read Matthew 21 verse 20, Mark 11 20, Luke 20 36, John 12 and verse 20. Then the next day, which supposed to be Wednesday in our own calendar, which we fall on Wednesday 30, uh, there, there was not, uh, no record in the Gospels about what he actually did on this uh, very day. Uh, it is regarded as the silent day. Uh, but much activity uh, as Jesus prepared for Last Supper and as Judas and Sidri prepare for Jesus' arrest. Um, so the next thing that we can notice about that day is that Jesus Christ remains in Bethany throughout and uh, he stays night there. Then on Thursday, uh, these are the activity that happened um, or will have happened if it were to be today. Uh, but this is how it happened that at that time. According to the record found in Matthew 26, um, uh, you can read verse 1, Mark also from verse 1, Mark 14 from verse 1, Luke 22, you can read from verse 1 then, then you're going to see the event that unfolded on a day like this. There, Peter and John were sent to make preparation for Passover meal. And after sunset, Jesus Christ hates meal with the twelve, uh, washes disciples, and uh, you know, Judas departs. Then your know, Lord's supper was instituted. You know, on a day like this, then. Uh, after that, he moved to Garden of Gethsemane, and um, you can see his agony in the garden. Then the betrayer by Judas, and and arrested by the Sanhedrin, the, the Jewish council. Now, just after that, it was uh, the house of high priest as Sanhedrin is convened. Then Peter betrayed. Jesus. So these are the events that happened, uh, or that will have happened uh, on the Thurs on Thursday of the Passion Week of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, so on Friday, and uh, we see the trials of Jesus Christ. Um, there are uh, six uh, trials. Friday was very, very loaded for our Lord Jesus Christ because that was exactly. Uh, the day that he was actually uh, um, crucified. It was a loaded day for him. And um, we are going to quickly uh, run through that. Alright. Now, uh, on Friday we see his first trial. Now, before Annas. Uh, and we are looking at and the uh, the night time hours. Annas is looking for an accusation bidding till uh, bidding time till Sandrine is gathered 
at I Priestley Villa. You can read Matthew 26, uh, 1 from verse 1 of Mark 14 53. You can use you can read Luke 22, uh, verse 54, then John 18, verse 13. Then the second and the primary trial of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can also see that before the Jewish council. Then how Jesus Christ was condemned and misused. His third trial. Uh, we see that one that immediately at down. And, we, and meanwhile Peter denied Jesus a third time. Jesus looked upon him. So this is around the time that Jesus, uh, uh, Peter also denied our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, around this time of his third trial. So uh, the condemnation was repeated. Then he was taken to the Romans. Then the fourth trial. Which this happened before Pilate. It happened before Pilate. And the fifth trial of our Lord Jesus Christ happened before Herod. He was looking for miracle. And the sixth uh, trial before Pilate. Before Pilate again. So here we see Jesus is scorched. You know, the city cries, crucify him or we will tell Rome. Then we can see that Jesus is finally turned over to be crucified. He was mocked by the Roman soldiers. They crowned him with the crown of thorns. And um, he was... Uh, we see Judas hangs himself in this uh, this particular day. It happened us on Friday. Then Jesus bears his cross to gates on north of city. And is crucified around 9 a.m. Which was on Friday morning. Around 9 a.m. in our own time. Now, Jesus, again, we see on Friday this happened. Jesus, seven saints from the cross. Let me quickly run through that one. While he was on the cross, these are the, uh, the statements that came from his mouth. One, Father, forgive them. Two, today, be with me in paradise. Uh, number three is, Woman, behold thy son. And th at this time, there was darkness around everywhere. And around that was around 3 p.m. Then the fourth statement was, My God, my God. You know, why have thou forsaken me? Then, the fifth statement was, I thirst. Then the sixth one is, it is finished. And lastly, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Now these are the statements of our Lord Jesus Christ that is, he made on the cross on the Friday. Now, then the last thing that happened, uh, you know, is that he, he died. And that was the death. And it was around about 3 p.m. Around after he made all those uh, statements at about 3 p.m., the veil of the temple was torn. You know, rocks were rent, and some graves opened, and people, you know, rose and they, they go into the city. Then we also see that Jesus' side was pierced, you know, and blood and water gushed out. Then the Passover lambs were slain, were slain uh, in the temple and Jesus buried by sundown and by sundown that was around evening uh, evening time he was he was buried and then the event that begins Saturday another sundown I mean, after sundown in the Jewish calendar it's already Saturday so on Saturday we should be in our home uh, calendar which will be April 3rd is that at the request of the Jewish we can see this in Matthew 27 and verse 66 at the request of the Jews uh, of the Jewish leadership sorry Pilate grants a guard 
and set his seal on the tomb of Jesus. That was exactly what happened on the Saturday. It happened on a Saturday. Then on Sunday, which is the resurrection money. Now, so Jesus Christ had actually risen. He, re he rises from the from the dead before the dawn. That means before the dawn on Sunday, very early, very early before dawn on Sunday morning, he had risen up and makes five appearances on the day of his appearing. Now we can see this account in Matthew 28 from verse 1 and see that in Mark 16 from verse 1, Luke 24 also from verse 1, then John 20 can read from verse 1. Now uh, the, he made five appearances you know on that day of his rising. Now he appeared to Mary Magdalene and he sent he gave he gave he gave her a message to the disciples. Number two, to other women who came to the tomb intended to complete the burial preparation of his body. They wanted to go and anoint the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And number three, he also appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um number four, he appeared to Simon. Uh, though it was nowhere recorded but alluded to in Luke 24 verse 33 and in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 5 then to the astonished disciples uh, though Tom and Thomas was absent uh, these are the these are the events these are the timelines of the events uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ now remember that we said that the reason why we took time to narrate this uh, is so that we can cast our minds back to history. We can know that the Passion Week of our Lord Jesus Christ was full of activities. It was full of activities and uh, we just want to draw some one or two conclusions from all these events. Uh, what can we learn? from what has happened uh, from the Palm Sunday till the uh, Resurrection Sunday. What is the significance of uh, these events? We cannot begin to put uh, to bring all the significance one after the other in this study. But every event was significant. But for today, we just want us to know that this is a week that is actually full of activities it is a week that our lord jesus christ uh, uh you know showed himself to to the world and uh, actually as a king as a messiah who came in order to do what to die and um, to save it is a it is a week that actually culminated the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, me is a ministry that crowned all the efforts of our Lord Jesus Christ. If this week uh, is removed uh, from the history of Christianity, the history will not be completed. And someone can say that what you guys are shouting about, it did not happen. And so we appreciate God for inspiration, for inspiring the writers, the uh, gospel writers that actually took time to document this event one after the other. And the people that took time to group them together day by day and make sure that it falls into our own calendar for, the, for, for today. So that everyone will know that what we are celebrating actually has its roots in history now we notice that at the beginning jesus christ rode into into uh, jerusalem as a king and people gave him a kingly welcome they welcomed him they did everything they were shouting osana 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 and you, know, you know yeah with the hope that he will come to do what to save. 
Now, one or two things that I want us to note before we pray, uh, because the purpose of this study is just to let you see the timeline of events as it unfolded in the Bible. But what are those two things that I want us to learn as we have seen it in the timeline of events uh, of the Passion Week of our Lord Jesus Christ? You will see that on the Palm Sunday, which, uh, which is the beginning of the celebration that we're talking about, we notice that people were praising Him, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. But the praise that they were lavishing on Jesus Christ was not because they recognized him as the Savior, you know, of the world. Or as they say, the one that has come to save us from sin. But they were praising him as a political Savior. The one who that will rescue them from poverty, you know, the one that will rescue them from the government oppression, you know, that will provide prosperity for them now you can see that you and I need to pause at this point that the kind of praise that we give to Jesus Christ today every Sunday every service every time we gather to worship what type of praise is it what type of mentality what type of you know understanding what gingers those praise are we praising him, you know, because he is the Savior, the one that has come to save us from sin, save us from the devils, you know, from the condemnation? Are we praising him because he is the one, the Savior of the world, that has come to bring the kingdom of God to our hearts? The praise, the Hosanna, Hosanna, that says, Save us, save us now. Save us from what? Because the Jewish people at that time were shouting Hosanna from wrong mentality, believing that, hey, this is the one that we have been waiting for. The one that will deliver us from the emperor. The one that will bring prosperity. And that was their own thinking. Now, what is our own thinking today as we shower praises on our Lord Jesus Christ every now and then? Are we praising Him because of what we want to collect? Are we praising Him? Are we following Him so that He can deliver us from poverty, can deliver us from lack, that He can deliver us from bad governance, from bad political leaders of our time? Is that the reason why we follow Jesus Christ? Is that the reason why we gather on Sunday to sing Hosanna to Him? That was exactly what these people were doing at that time. And that when we look at the timeline that we have actually read, we discover that Jesus Christ came with a different intention. The intention of Jesus Christ was not for that, was not to come and deliver people from all those things that, from the Roman government was not to come and fight the Roman government and overthrow them and establish his kingdom by force. That was not, that was not what Jesus Christ came to do. Look at it. If you look at it, the Bible says he came on a donkey. He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, on a small court, on a court, you know, on a small, very, a very humble, innocent you know, God, and that was what he used. He entered as a lowly servant. If he will have used a very pompous, uh, 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 um, you know, horse, and that, that 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 will be jumping, that will be, you know, but a cold, very innocent, no problem. That was what Jesus Christ used to ride, to 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 show to people that this is a lowly servant. That this one has come to serve. This one has not come to fight. This one has come for peace. Now, another significant thing about his entrance into Jerusalem, his triumphant entry, is that he came not to conquer by force as earthly kings. 
but he came you know by love grace to give love you know grace mercy and to sacrifice himself to the people he didn't come you know uh, to come and, and conquer by force he came to come and give love to people another thing is that his kingdom is not that of armies but of you know of lowliness of mind and of servanthood he came to serve and look at that he came not to conquer nations but the hearts and minds of men that's what jesus christ came to do he did not come to come and conquer nations to come and overthrow kings to come and do everything yeah but how will he do that he came to come and conquer the heart if he conquers the heart of men he has conquered the world and that's what jesus christ came to do but when when we look at all this timeline again you will discover that something happened that when people discover that uh, our what we thought this is not, was not what this man has come to do when they discover that his mission was different totally you know from what they thought that ah we have seen a savior we have seen a deliverer the one that will fight for us the one that we killed uh, every all our enemies the way they discover that oh this one is a servant too. this one came with peace this one came to die this one came so that he can rescue us from all our sins the people turn they turn against him the same people that sang Hosanna on Palm Sunday they turn against him when on Friday the same people that said Oh Sana, oh Sana, that was singing praises. So you can see, according to the timeline, that on so on, on on Friday, what did they do? Please, they turned against him. And what was their song at that time? Crucify him. The same people. Can you take note of that? The same people that said, Oh Sana, oh Sana. On the palm Sunday, that were waving leaves, spreading everything. That he said, "Oh, King." The same set of people, they were the ones that said, "Crucify him." We thought he came for us, but we have discovered that eh, eh, this one is not ready to save us. Not knowing that he has actually come to conquer their heart, to save them from sin, to save them from the from the clutches of the devil. But they didn't understand and they declare crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And that was actually what happened. People change because their expectations of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, was not met. Now, you can see, and at the end of the day, the witch of the people, you know, was granted. Of course, that was what he came to do. That was the fulfillment of the prophecy. He had to die. He had to die so that the people can be saved. So that you and I can be saved. And as people were saying, crucifying him, say, yeah, this is what I've actually do, come to do. And that was what actually happened. So to show to you and I that Jesus Christ came so that he can actually have his way in our lives. That was why we discovered that on the second day, uh, you know, after the triumphant entry in our timeline, what did he do? He headed straight for the temple. He did temple cleansing. As people were doing all their ceremony, he was not distracted. He was going directly into the temple. And temple represents our lives, your heart, your body. He headed straight there and he casted out those who buy, sell, and everything that does not glorify. He said, this house shall be called the house of prayer. That's the intention of Jesus Christ for coming at this point in time. And he, was, he, was, and he did that. Then he moved forward. He saw a fig tree. 
he taught people about faith. Then on Thursday, you know, he instituted the what? The Holy Communion. He instituted that because he wants you and I to keep remembering the event. To keep remembering that, look, oh, this is the Passover. I am going to die. And keep remembering me. As you often as you do this, you must remember me. You must remember that I shed my blood and I will break my body on your behalf in order so that you can be saved. He did that. And when he left that place, he went straight to the garden of, of Gethsemane and he went there to go and pray, to go and agonize in prayer. To go make sure that he conquered the flesh, he conquered the devil, and it after that he was betrayed. Then after the betrayal, he was he was he went for trials, and after the trial he was sentenced. Then after that he went to the cross. Then on the cross he made those seven significant statements, and all those statements, if not for all those statements, you and I will not be alive today. Jesus Christ did this for you and I. Then look at this now. He, he entered triumphantly into Jerusalem. And he also he went to the cross there. But he resurrected triumphantly. And he provided for us a new life. My question for you as we pray. Is that in this this season, this season, this the, 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 the question for the season for you and I is as Jesus Christ made a triumphant entry into your life, as he made a triumphant entry into your life, into your family, and as his entry, how do you see him? Do you see him as someone who has just come to to give you all those things? To deliver you from poverty, to give prosperity, to give you all of that. They are very good. But I see, have you actually, have you actually, you know, met him? What type of Messiah have you even met? Is it the kind of Messiah of the Jews that you are waiting for? The one that, you, that will deliver you from, the, from bad governance in Nigeria? I doubt if we are going to see that the one that will make the nation better that will overthrow all our bad leaders all our bad governors and be in charge well i don't know that was the mistake of the jews also but is that the type of messiah you are expecting you may not find you may not find that and look at that the kind of messiah that Jesus Christ has presented to the whole world is the one that has come to do what to deliver us from sin. Have you been delivered from sin? Have you met Jesus Christ that delivered people from their sins? That's the question for you for this season. That you and I need to do what to reflect on. And the third question is that have you given him room in your heart? He says, your body is the temple of the living God. And that's why he added for that temple. Where Jesus Christ wants want to live is in our heart. This season, have you provided a room for him? Have you allowed him to turn the tables and drive away all the money changers? All those things contending with God, with him in your heart. Have you allowed him to drive them out? This is the season. This season you can tell him to do what? To turn the tables and drive away every money changer. In your life, in your family, he will do it. This is the season. And lastly, do you experience, have you experienced the resurrected life? He went to the cross and he resurrected. By, by Sunday morning, on that day, they didn't see him again. They couldn't see him. He had resurrected. He had gone. The people that came to around to anoint his body, they were disappointed. That is resurrection. The resurrection life 
produces new life for us. It produces the reality of new life. The, the reality that we are in Christ. The Bible says, Second Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are what are now new. Have you are you experienced this reality? The reality that you are now new. That you are now in Christ. Are you experiencing all this? These are the are, I mean, are the things are the benefits of resurrection. Your life must be new. Everything about you must be new. You must be living as a new created being. So this season, my prayer is that you will experience the joy of salvation. You will experience the newness of life. You will experience the reality of, of, of what? Of resurrection in every aspect of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ lastly don't be among believers that shout Hosanna on Sunday and shout crucify him some other day let's look at our lives and that is what majority of us do when we gather on Sunday we can say Hosanna we worship we sing, we dance, we praise, forgiving us good things, God, forgiving us food, forgiving us shelter, forgiving us money. We can shout Hosanna on Sunday. But what do we, sh what do we shout on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of every week? That is a question for you as we pray this evening. The Lord bless you. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for taking us through this time, the Passion Week, and uh, and see the, the historical significance of all these events to our lives. We bless your holy name. Lord, the question that you have dropped for us today is that you just want our lives to be better. You are interested in our redemption. That is the reason why you gave your life. Lord, we are praying that we don't want this season to go in vain in our lives. Everything that you need to do, everything that, oh God, we need to do so that uh, this season can be significant and it can produce uh, the fruit uh, that you expect from our lives. Lord, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.